times it hasn't been the uh, the typical path to 100. Have you had time to reflect on it? Uh, no, I've been asked that question over the weekend a little bit actually, but um, can't really reflect while you're playing, you just keep moving on. But uh, it has been a little bit unusual, but um, I'm pretty grateful that I uh, got from one the opportunity to play AFL and then um, to get to maybe next week or this week is um, yeah, pretty special. How many times since you were drafted have you sort of thought it might be hit? I mean, obviously, the end of last year with <coughs> Geelong party ways. Have there been occasions when you've thought, oh, that's it, I'm, I appreciate what I've had, but it's done? Um, not really, I don't think. I think, um, yeah, I just uh, always believe I could probably play AFL footy. And um, when I played one game, all I thought was I'd just try and play as many as I can. So uh, in the last year when um, David and I called me, I just thought that uh, candle was still alight and um, I thought I'd continue playing. After all that experience and all those games, are you sort of, with yourself, you any clearer as to why it took so long for you to get recognised and to get that sort of proper opportunity at the elite level? Yeah, I'm definitely pretty clear on um, why I didn't make it early, why I didn't play AFL pretty early. Um, I didn't have a game, I wasn't probably physically mature, mentally mature, so it took me a while and um, when I was about probably 22, 23, I thought that I uh, could go to that next level, but um, when you're out of the system, it's really hard to get back in, so fortunate for me when I was 28, John gave me a, an awesome opportunity, so I was to take it. So was there a point, like, like say when you're 22, 23, that you, you know, is there a single point where you realise you can do it? Um, yeah, there is, I, I think there is. I think um, you just get confidence playing, um, or play, getting confident as you keep playing games and um, you feel like uh, you contribute more uh, as an individual during, um, during games as well. So I did think there was a point where I, I could uh, take the next step. What about the toughest? Aspects of your career, what's been the toughest things to deal with? Um, I suppose early on, there's those, uh, those times you get rejected and, and get told you're not good enough. Um, but uh, yeah, that probably lasts a day, and then um, the rest of that time, you just the, the next sort of phase of it is just using that for motivation. And I have, to be honest, used some of those um, the people that told me that I probably wasn't going to make it, I've used them for, for motivation to, uh, to try and take the next step. Keep thinking back to it. Uh, I don't think back to it, but I do. Um, it's in the back of my mind, but I don't, yeah, you know what I mean? I just, it's just, I move forward pretty quickly. Why did they say you wouldn't make it? Uh, I think there was, to be honest, I think I tried out at six different clubs and everyone had something different to say. Um, so it was actually quite good, to be honest, because all I did was go away and, and work, on the, work on that thing that um, they said. One one uh, club I said I wasn't big enough, the other side I wasn't fit enough, the other, side, the other club I said I wasn't strong enough, so I just went away and worked on it and it probably um, uh, helped me out and made me the player I am. Great satisfaction, yeah? Uh, yeah, I think it, uh, it is more for my, um, to be honest, my family, my wife, I suppose, uh, they've been with me over the, over the journey as well, so um, to see them and uh, you know, hopefully their reaction when I do play 100, um, I'll be pretty happy for them. So when you're a coach, is it a lesson you might tell Kids, others never give up on your dream. Um, yeah, potentially. Yeah, I think uh, there's a there's definitely a lesson to be learned. Well, Which, you, sorry, are you pleased to be playing in a, a game that's it's a big game. There's a lot on the line. Uh, yeah, no doubt. You love uh, as a player. Uh, what you play three for is is big games, and that's what we have uh, this week against Collingwood. Yeah, so, has it got a finals feel about it? Has it built up? Uh, has it uh, build up into it? No, nah, definitely not a finals feel. Finals are completely different. Because um, it's not do or die, finals are mostly do or die. Um, but it's definitely a, uh, a big game for the footy club and our, and our team. Is it not do or die? People will say if you do lose, you could very easily fall two games out of the top eight with only a hair, you know, less than a handful of play. Yeah, I can but, see that, but um, mathematics is a funny thing. If it's mathematically possible, it's still possible. But, uh, we are really focused on getting the, um, the four points this weekend, and whatever happens after that, week, after this, and the other results. So internally, there's no difference to your approach to this game with any other home and away clash? You actually can't be. You can't have that, um, can't have a different approach to any other game. You've got to be consistent all the way through the season. And um, <coughs> from what I've seen on the training track today, um, the boys have had that. They've had a good break. They've come back, really switched on just as they were um, the game before Hawthorne, the game against Hawthorne as well. well how, do, how do you reckon your form's tracking at the minute? Uh, from the feedback I'm getting from uh, Sando and, and Bix, who's my line coach, um, I'm pretty happy with, so I'll just continue down that track and hopefully they um, continue to be happy with me. Do you have a fair bit of flexibility to move yourself on the field, or does that all come from the coaching box? Like no, when you it's swing back and that sort of stuff? Uh, it's driven with a pretty clear strategy um, before the game that the, the coaches sort of set out, but um, 
sometimes it might look like that when I do that, but it, uh, it is based on the strategy we have. So when Sando talks to players, you don't think it would make, make this game more important than others? I mean, the players must know how significant it is, though. Uh, we know it's significant, but every game in the NFL is realistically the way how even the comp is, is significant. And I wouldn't assume Sando would treat uh, his preparation of this game any different than he did when we played Colin last time. But it's, your, it's, your, it's your classic, I guess, eight point game, though, isn't it? The gas team that's just ahead of you on the table. Yeah, I think uh, maybe it, could, it could be, but uh, mate, we don't really into that. Okay. Um, <laughs> last time you time was um, one of better efforts for you, like, yeah. especially the, the tackling and the, the pressure. Is that something you really trying to replicate again this week? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we had 90 odd tackles against Collingwood last time. And um, I mean, you give those, those guys time and space, they were very talented. Um, side with a dangerous forward line, so we've got to uh, really pressure them and, and uh, hopefully tackle them. Your injury list is not looking too bad at the moment, hopefully a couple of players will come back. Do you feel you're as well off prepared and physically go to this game than maybe any other match this year? Yeah, we're pretty confident with uh, our preparation over the over the bye and um, we have a limited injury list too, which is a fantastic spot to be in this time of year. So what have you worked on over the bye? Uh, recovery. <laughs> recovery. Honestly, it's what it is. I think it's uh, you know, mid-July, um, everyone's body starts to feel it. Um, so the most important thing is to recover and come here on Monday morning and train well, and that's what we've done. And guys like Tex and, and Patrick, I guess, said, I sort of mentioned that they would benefit enormously from the bike. Is that a fair call? Yeah, I think there's more than them. I think we've had a lot of players that have played nearly every game. Um, so from that point of view, uh, it's, uh, it's been a fantastic week off. First session back this morning, was there a bit of an extra spring in the step, fresh? Uh, it was really sharp, really sharp. So I'm um, pretty sure Sando and the coaches are really happy with the way we train, um, and uh, the players were too, so there's a good feel around the club. What are you expecting from Collingwood? Uh, they have lots of talent, lots of skill, good run. Um, uh, the MCG is their home ground, so uh, it's going to be a really tough game. A bit vulnerable, no dance squad, that's obviously bonus for you guys, he normally plays well against the cross. Yeah, Brownlow medalist, talented player, um, and three best in Paris, so uh, having that aside, he's, um, he's uh, lucky for us, but I'm sure that I've seen Collingwood's list and it's got a lot of depth and there'll be another player um, that comes in, like a, like a Thomas, someone like that will come in and play well, so we can't take them lightly. What's going to be the key to beating um, Pressuring him, I think. As I said, they're really... Uh, Drilled side, they're well structured and they use the ball well, so we've got pressure and I think we could uh, gauge our performance on that. Want to stay connected to the pros? Like us on Facebook.